<laughs> All right, and we are back on the uh, the technical stage here at API Days New York, and uh, I might be having some little technical issues. My video might be frozen. I apologize if my video is frozen. I'm making a weird face. Uh, that's how my face always looks. Uh, first up on this block of talks, we've got a great talk by uh, Marjuka Ninioja uh, talking about API op cycles. And I will let you take it away and troubleshoot my video. That's great. But that look is kind of cool. It kind of freezes over <laughs> from time to time. But let's see how my video is doing. So hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Marek Perina, and I'm talking to you from Finland. Uh, and the topic is API cycles and how to develop business and tech together. And if you are new to API of cycles, you should just go ahead and uh, click the link, well, virtually click the link apopcycles.com and go check the method out. Uh, I'm founding partner of Osango and local organizer of API Days Helsinki. So we'll have uh, the second set of API Days Helsinki uh, this year in September, uh, first and second. So welcome there too. And I'm a consultant and trainer and architect uh, in API economy, APIs platforms, uh, and worked with uh, quite a lot of companies. Also author of API Economy 101 book, which is about kind of the business models, but also the tech stuff and with uh, research, scientific research articles plus practice. API Cycles was kind of, is, is kind of my child. I was working in, in a few different companies and everybody kept telling me that, hey, how are you guys doing this thing? Because we were scaling from like a couple of teams to 30 teams over a few months. And we had a huge issue of like how to really build APIs. And we went through a lot of trial and error, but my teams were kind of really successful in building the APIs and, and we wanted to know why. And so this method kind of was developed with, with um, some customers and some teams. And basically here are the steps uh, of the method. And I'll go through quickly about why. <coughs> Sorry, need to take a sip of coffee here. It's not the virus, hopefully. Yeah, but anyway, the <coughs> why you should go uh, and use this method and how it kind of works when you use it. So some quick uh, best practices and steps. So first of all, why should you consider this method? Well, kind of do we have a problem here? So how do developers, first of all, see the kind of traditional enterprise architects behavior? How are lean and agile projects in general being done? I mean, there there has been a lot of kind of old school ways of doing software, a lot of audits, checklists, uh, best practices. And then there's the very lean way and agile way of doing software. The problem with the agile, like the super agile way is that there are a lot of things that are sometimes missed or oftentimes missed, like, for example, non-functional requirements, which you are supposed to not talk about anymore because it's not cool, but you really do have to talk about it, especially with APIs. <coughs> now, this is a list of, of a lot of things that I see in the wild. So basically a lot of APIs have handwritten documentation. They have sensitive info all over the place. The teams have very little clue on OWASP and, and security compliance. Uh, people copy paste API design from other APIs, but they don't necessarily know why certain design decisions have been made. Uh, the APIs bloat. They are covering a lot of things that they might not actually need to cover if you ask the customers of those APIs. And also, kind of the, there's no real knowledge in some cases of why and what level of security, what level of requirements detail you have to use. And, you know, my personal favorite is that, which which just came in a, in a project to me, that kind of the product owners, the business people, the not so API-fied uh, technical people in the teams, they don't really know what's going on with the APIs. 
in the development. Let's say you're building a platform or you're developing an app and you as a developer uh, might know that you have a lot of APIs and what you're going to do with those APIs from a technical point of view. It might not be clear what should be done with the APIs from a business point of view, or at least the business owners, the product owners, uh, everybody not so techy doesn't know what is actually happening with the APIs. So a lot of times people are building stuff and it will contain APIs and the APIs will be exposed. Like for example, uh, just now in a project we had, we only offer APIs to like selected group of uh, partners, but actually what happened was that it's a, I asked that, what is your architecture? Well, it's a single page app. Well, then you have those APIs out there. They are going to be exposed. They are running on, on uh, customers' devices technically, and the traffic will be seen by the users. So what's stopping them from not using the APIs? And that was kind of like a problem by design that, I mean, there was a good chance that the APIs would be used more widely. And actually that wouldn't have been a bad case also from a business point of view, it just was not known by the business people. The other thing is that when we develop software, um, everybody, well, almost everybody uh, is doing some form of DevOps nowadays, some form of automation and transparency and measuring and everything, I hope they are, but, uh, APIs actually need two times DevOps. I talked with some Canadian uh, developers and they were quite confused, not because they're Canadian, but just because the idea of like APIs and DevOps and kind of two different cycles going there was not a familiar thing to them. And we also <laughs> almost came into an argument of why that is. So the idea is that APIs need something specific to them, like user interfaces. So uh, when you have an API, I mean, it's the interface of things. The interface, when done properly, has a lot of stuff that is just related to the interface. The data models, the documentation, uh, a lot of things, authentication can even be different for the API than for the rest of the system, especially when we are talking about legacy systems. And when you are rolling out, releasing new code, when you're making specs, you are you're doing your code commits and your CI builds and stuff, you actually need to figure out when does the interface change and when does the system under it change. So that's why I say that APIs need two times DevOps. So what, what should we do about this? I mean, you wouldn't develop uh, user interfaces with any method. Uh, you would use user interface designing methods, hopefully. Uh, so why are you doing that with APIs then? So one of the things that APF Cycles does for you is that it helps you to remove uh, the eight ways of lean. So I don't know if people here are familiar with lean uh, management, but the idea is that DevOps is very kind of close to lean. Lean was one of the things where um, DevOps was born from. So the ideas of Kanban and a lot of other things are from lean and uh, they're often used with DevOps. So API Ops is, as, as it's self, just API Ops is DevOps for APIs. But the API Ops cycles method is a very specific method that combines API ops and business DevOps kind of stuff. So building business as um, it was software and then product management. We used also minimum viable API architecture. Uh, so from minimum viable architecture, which is like too little known uh, from my point of view and also lean. So the idea is that there's a lot of lean management waste. So wait times and, and over, uh, doing a lot of things and creating this kind of organizational process and time waste. And APF Cycles is designed to take away that waste. So APF Cycles is not just for single APIs. Um, when you're starting to use the method, that might be something that you think of, like you start from uh, one single group of uh, users. So you take the end user journeys, the ecosystem journeys there, and then you start looking at what would a developer need to get 
those t stories and tasks or job to be done, whatever method you're using there, what are you needing as a developer, as a, a UI developer or, or application developer using the APIs? What would you need? What are your customer needs? Uh, and then you kind of widen the audience and widen the plan into other audiences and their needs. So it's useful for API strategy. It's useful for modeling a business. So if your, your business is about APIs or platforms or something, you should really use this method. But also if your business is something totally different, uh, putting this method in place and using it helps to actually get your business into a more kind of uh, con uh, disconnected and, 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 and divided method and model so that you don't have these very tightly linked uh, teams that are stuck doing things that are kind of just getting uh, into one big platform, one big mess of code, but you can kind of devise, uh, divide and, and, and think about how you actually divide your business into teams and what is the stuff that you concentrate on in your company. So obviously it's also useful for knowing which APIs to actually build or buy or borrow or even steal sometimes. So it's about um, kind of reuse, promoting reuse and promoting really to concentrate on what you actually need. Now, this method is about collaboration. And the one thing I see as a failure when uh, companies and teams try to implement this method in their uh, in internal processes is that the API teams look like this. this. This is like no diversity whatsoever, and it's only technical people and <clears throat> well, sometimes only men. <laughs> But the main point is that even if there are women there, but if it's only tech people, if it's only developers or architects there, it just won't work. So this method needs other people to get involved. And we are going to look a little bit about who those other people should be. Uh, so you need to invite everybody there. But that means also that developers need to actually talk a bit about business. And this method tries to make that discussion easier. So there's a very good um, research article that says that those places in the world where developers and marketers co coexist nicely and collaborate, um, they actually produce both a lot more APIs, but also better startups and better companies. And that is one reason why Silicon Valley, for example, is very successful in that area, according to that research. So who do you need to participate? You need business, you need marketing, you need you know, different genders, nationalities, of course, but you need also seniors, juniors, customers, partners. And of course, sometimes you need your favorite API consultant to help you out. But how do you get those people into the room? Some some of uh, the users of API cycles asked me that, and you actually need to kind of you know bribe them. Um, well, cake and coffee, beers, whatever you need to tell them, uh, them that you will have. But what you need to actually tell them is that how will this uh, using this method and coming into this workshop session around these canvases, how does it help them to achieve their goals? So how is the business going to be better? How is it going to help them uh, to get the app that they want sooner uh, than they would otherwise get it and better uh, matching with their requirements and their goals? Now, <clears throat> if you start using this, you might take one team, one business unit would be a preference. Or if you are doing a kind of a startup scenario, of course, you will have that one team there. So take it one team, take one uh, customer segment first and go through the API canvas phases. There is um, a bunch of these phases like I saw, uh, showed you in the beginning. And each of them have some canvases or some set of, of um, um, examples or checklists there. And then what happens is that from the value prop canvas, from all of those, Canvas is at first, you will actually get into the technical design of, of the API much more quick uh, quickly than 
usual. Why do we use these canvases then that look like, okay, this is your average business model canvas, but used a little bit differently from API point of view. So here's a water services example from a real project I was doing for some water services suppliers. And we were modeling out stuff into the business model canvas, but also using the other canvases to get to developer experience and stuff. So what this does is that it basically tells you the right ways, the right uh, instructions to start using and doing your APIs with these different uh, stakeholders. And then you have these canvases like that look like, you know, coloring book pages. But what that gives you is that nobody really gets the architecture diagrams that the architects draw really, truly, uh, except the architects. So these canvases actually make the discussion much more easier and take the business stuff in there, which then helps you to understand really what are the re technical requirements, especially the non-functional requirements. And this leads you to the API first design and you are okay to design your APIs together or in, at the same time as you're user interfaces. So that's sometimes a real problem when the user interface guys and designers kind of overrule all the backend stuff. It's technology agnostic. Uh, there's checklists, there's uh, design guides there for especially REST APIs, but they do work uh, to some extent for other technologies. And then there's also some ideas about how to automate that. So we are having a hybrid race course, check that out at osang.academy. And then, so if you want to get started, just kind of have these three ingredients. So business goals and your skill team who know how to do their stuff, but also use this method. And then <clears throat> of course the plans for the APIs and the needs for the APIs. And if you want any more info, go to apocycles.com or osangwak.academy. We have some um, online courses on that. Or just go and fill that form. Uh, you will be asked that also in the, in the website. But go and fill that form. And if you do that, you can to give your input to the method, but also get your personalized implementation guide for implementing APF cycles in your organization or with your customers. Thank you. So, yes, Tony is here. Yeah, there I am, I'm back. That's awesome. So uh, any questions from the audience? Let's uh, let's see if there's any any questions. All right. And uh, yeah, so uh, first question uh, looks like, uh, could you share an example of F500 or other large firm, Fortune 500 firm, uh, where marketers and businesses uh, collaborate really well? Well, <clears throat> let's see, one company might come into mind, that might be Twilio, now that you mentioned it, but, <laughs> oh, right yeah, but I mean, seriously, <laughs> uh, Twilio and I have to mention your, um, uh, kind of competitor one hour next law, which is in the same space, but they are also doing a great job. And you can see that the there is a real connection between the marketers and the developers because it's kind of like all the onboarding and all the marketing itself is actually inbuilt to the product. And, and you get to try out the APIs, even if you are non-coder or if you're a coder really quickly. So it does take like, couple of minutes or so max 15 minutes to try them both, even if you are like as buggy coder as me. So really that is some, some, something that I would say as an example. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it really does make a difference. You can you can tell the companies that that take an API first approach because I think you see all of those like results coming off of that decision, right? Yeah. You, you put APIs first, then then all of the rest of the uh, you know the, the the ducks line up in a row, so to speak. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, great. Any other questions uh, from the audience? All right. It's Mark and Emily again here. <laughs> saying that great Thanks, guys. Uh, but yeah, so if you have any questions, just connect me or even if you don't have questions yet, so connect with me. And I'm going to publish a quick 
uh, tutorial based on the slides in Twitter and LinkedIn later. Um, so just follow me and you'll see those. Great. Awesome. Well, thank you so much uh, for the fantastic talk. And it looks like there's not any other questions coming in. So ah, it looks like that we'll discuss your talk at the next meetup. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, uh, 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 yeah, Marcus. Marcus. Yeah, Marcus won. So uh, what does it mean uh, if we should speak with HR corporate leaders about how to think about the team composition? Yes, exactly. So uh, I would say that that's one thing that surprises people a lot, that APIs done properly actually change your organization. Uh, it changes a lot of other things too. <laughs> it changes your you know, program management and budgeting and team, uh, team structures and, and skills and everything else, and who needs to collaborate with who. So definitely when I've been implementing a, you know, APIs in, in larger corporations, I always have had to have a talk with a lot of weird people <laughs> in, in terms of APIs, weird people <laughs> otherwise, but for example, and, and business managers and VPs and whatever. Awesome. Awesome. Cool. Well, I think we are uh, coming up and ready for the next talk or getting ready for the next talk. So again, uh, thank you so much. Uh, you. Any more any more questions? Uh, definitely uh, you can hit up the chat and we'll make sure we send yeah. those over to the speakers. And we'll, we'll do that for all the talks today. So uh, if there's uh, definitely uh, keep dropping questions, conversations in, in, the, in the chat, and we will uh, make sure that all gets connected.